All right, good evening. Here we are in our Old Testament study, 2 Samuel chapter 16. 2 Samuel chapter 16. <clears throat> Remember, we are in the story here where uh, David's son Absalom is trying to take over the throne. And David and his faithful, they've decided to leave Jerusalem so there won't be a war in Jerusalem. All the people end up getting killed and everything. So they've left the city. Absalom's going to come into the city and think he's took over the throne, but it ain't that quite that easy yet. Uh, from last week's chapter, you might remember there's, a, there's people that they're going to go in, they're going to act like they're friends with Absalom, but they're really serving as agents for David to get word back to him. And it's kind of, uh, you see some of that in this chapter, like it's who's on whose side here kind of thing. And have you noticed that in Christianity it's like that sometimes? It's hard to tell who's on our side. Not everybody that says they're on our side is always on our side, are they? So chapter 16, verse 1, David's leaving the city. This is a, a sad but somewhat humorous story here, and, but uh, David's going to see God in the stories in this first part of the chapter here. David and his um, soldiers that were faithful to him they're leaving the city they've got outside of town and when David was a little past the top of the hill behold Ziba the servant of Mephibosheth remember Mephibosheth was uh, one of Saul's household but uh, David was kind to him because of the promise he made to uh, Jonathan Mephibosheth remember was the crippled boy and David took him in took care of him so he's got a servant by the name of Ziba, and Ziba, who's the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of, a, a, a bunch of stuff for a nice big gift. He's got a couple of asses saddled up on them, or 200 loaves of bread, 100 bunches of raisins, uh, hundreds of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said to Ziba, what's this all about? What, what meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, the asses are for the king's household, his family to ride on. And the bread and the summer fruit are for the, his, the young men to eat. And the wine that such as be faint in the wilderness may, may drink. I'm, I'm offering support. I'm on your side. We're going to support you and your, your folks here now. Uh, but Ziba is not what he appears to be, we're going to see. And the king said, and where is your master's son? Where's Mephibosheth? And Ziba said to the king, Behold, he abide, he's back at Jerusalem, for he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Now, Mephibosheth hadn't said this. Ziba's uh, making stuff up now. And then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertaineth unto Mephibosheth. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, O Lord, my, my Lord, O king. Ziba says, We're on your side. And when King David came to Bahurim, he, behold, here's the funny story now, funny but sad. The king came into the place called Bahurim, and behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul. Boy, he was mad. He saw David coming down the, through there and all this army. He's leaving Jerusalem, and it just flies all over him because he, he was faithful. He really liked old King Saul. And this man's name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth, and he... He cursed still as he comes. He sees him coming, and he comes out there, there no shimmy. He's just a cussing and a going on as he comes. And he picked up rocks, and he started throwing them at David. He cast stones at David and all the servants of the king, David. Now, he's got here. Here's David and his army leaving the city. And Shimei goes out. He's, he's so mad. He, he, he ain't thinking straight. He's cussing at him, walks over there, and he's throwing dirt, and he's throwing rocks. What do you think is going to happen? You, you think, <laughs> he's dead. They're going to kill him, right? But it, it didn't happen here. It, could, it, very, it probably should have and would have in most all cases, but uh, David looked at it differently. Let's see what happens here. All the, all the mighty men were on David's right hand and his left, verse 7, and thus said Shimei when he cursed, Come out, come out, you bloody man, you man of Belial. That's about the worst you can call anybody in the Bible, the sons of Belial. He looked like he's son of the devil. And the Lord hath returned... Upon Shimei, I said, God did. The Lord's returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul. <laughs> God's getting even with you now, David, in whose stead you have reigned. And the Lord's delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, thy son. And behold, 
you are taken in mischief because you're a bloody man. Then, so, Jimmy, I was saying what? God's getting even with you now, David, right? And he's throwing rocks and cussing and going on. as Verse 9. <clears throat> then said Abishai, the son of Zerah, unto the king. Somebody sat, sitting there close to David says, he's dodging the rocks. You know, he says, why should this dead dog curse the Lord my king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and I'll take off his head. I'll cut his head off. You just say the word, David. And the king said, mm -mm. <laughs> What have I to do with you, you sons of Zerah? Let him curse. Because the Lord said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? David said, I, I deserve it. I, I've done a lot of bad stuff. Said, God maybe God probably did tell him to curse me, and I'm just going to take it. You know. And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold my son. He's talking about Abalon, Absalom now. Behold my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it. Leave him alone. Let him curse, for the Lord's bidding him. And David very wisely, I think, in verse 12, said this. This, this is what to, this word applies to me and you. <laughs> it's hard to do this. <clears throat> David was getting persecuted. And you know what happens to the, fe to the flesh when we're getting persecuted? We want to get them back, <laughs> right? We want, if they get loud and start yelling at us, what, what's our tendency to do? I'm going to get louder and yell louder at him, right? But Proverbs says, a soft answer turns away wrath. Boy, that's hard to do. It's true. You know it's true, but it's hard to do. And David's going to say in verse 12, says, uh, It may be that the Lord will look upon mine affliction and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. In other words, David said a very spiritual thing here in the, in the heat of all this. He says, <clears throat> I'm going to let God handle this. I'm not going to take it in my own hands. I'm going to step back and let God handle it. You know, if God wants to strike him down with a bolt of lightning, that's one thing. But he says, maybe God will handle it. Maybe God will, will bless me for not taking it into my hands right here. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and threw dust in the air. <laughs> He's just crazy, ain't he? Politics will do that to people, don't make them crazy. <laughs> and the king and all the people that were with him, they came weary and refreshed themselves there. That's their first camp outside of Jerusalem, I guess. And Absalom and all the people of the men of Israel came to Jerusalem. So she scene shift. Now we're going back to town. Here we're in Jerusalem. Here's Absalom and his people coming into town now. David's left. So they think, well, this was easy, right? Absalom and all the people of the men of Israel came to Jerusalem. And Ahithophel with him. And it came to pass when Hushai the Archite, which was David's friend, was come to Absalom, that Hushai said to Absalom, God save the king, God save the king. And Absalom probably thought he was thinking about him, but Hushai was probably thinking King David. But Absalom said to Hushai, verse 17, Is this thy kindness to thy friend? Why wentest not with thy friend? Which king are you talking about? I'm king now, Absalom's thinking. He said, Why didn't you go with David? You've always been friend with dad. And Hushai, verse 18, said to Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord and his people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with him I will abide. Remember, David sent him back to get information. And Hushai says, I'm going along with whoever the people choose, and it looks like it's you. I'll stay with you just like I did your daddy. And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son as I've served in your father's presence? So will I be in thy presence. I've been David's counselor, but now if you're king, I'll be your counselor. Then said Absalom to Ahith Ahithophel, he asked Ahithophel, another one that you don't know whose side he's on yet, except we do, don't we? He's really on David's side. <clears throat> but Absalom says to him, says, give counsel among what you, what you, what we should do. 
Absalom, Hushai, and says, there, he says, if, we, if you're going to give counsel, says, tell us what we need to do then. We want to listen to you. And Hithphel said to Absalom, go into your father's concubines, which he's left to keep the house. Remember he left his concubines back there? I don't think he meant to stay gone all this long that he's going to stay gone, but when Absalom comes in, Hithophel says, now, says, if you want everybody to know that you're a king, says, let them know that you took over his harem. And all Israel will hear that you are aboard of your father. They'll know how much your father is going to hate you then. Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. If you want to bring everybody on your side together, do, do this. So they spread Absalom a tent on top of the house, the flat roof house. They put a tent up there, and they wanted everybody to see him going into his father's harem. And Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So David and Absalom both, when they, Absalom had something to say, the advisor was looking up, looked upon back then in that day as somebody who was speaking on behalf of God. So they both listened to him. So was the counsel of Ahithophel both with David and with Absalom. All right, this is kind of a transitional chapter once again as we're moving into this battle between David and his son over the throne. And uh, I'll just bring that point back to you again. So uh, things may look like they're in chaos, and sometimes we don't know who's on whose side here. But uh, God's behind the curtain, and he's still in control. We'll see you next time.